hey, 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 hey! Mr. Or here at your service. Yes! Bath time! Ring the bell! That's right, my friend. It's another great fun session with... Oh, Lonnie, you're back, dude. Lonnie! Yes, it's the scissor dude, you know? The guy who cut the E off my word variable, but he doesn't think I know. Yeah, hello. That's right, my friends. Hey, let's go ahead and take a look at what our learning target is today. Yes, look at We're going to continue writing, evaluating, and generating equivalent expressions with real world problems. That's right, and we're not doing kindergarten. No, this is sixth grade, my friends. So, you know, you really need to buckle up, make sure that seatbelt is fastened, because I promise you, this ride could get very bumpy. Okay, well, let's go ahead. Look, this is review two. This is our second video. As you can see, all right, we have our friend Lonnie with us again. Oh, my goodness. So let's see what we've got planned today. Okay, here we go. So we're going to continue on with question number five. It says, Sammy was asked to evaluate the following problem. His steps are shown below. Aha, I see it in yellow. Ooh, very nice. Which step contains his first mistake? Ooh, when evaluating this expression. Explain his mistake and the correct method to evaluate the expression. Cool, it's like we get to be the teacher. Very cool. Uh, but Mr. War, you are a teacher. Okay, but we can all be teachers. All right. I'm looking at the expression. I'm tempted to just go ahead to solve the expression first and then see where maybe he made his mistake. Let's just take a step by step. So I'm going to rewrite this expression here. So when I'm looking at this. I would read this as the difference of 7 and 4 plus 3 multiplied by the difference of 5 and n. Hmm, okay, so that's basically what I have. Well, my first step, if you recall, we have something called good old PEMDAS. Let's come over here. P E M D A S. PEMDAS. Nobody says, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. They don't hardly even say that anymore because we've just memorized it as PEMDAS. Cool. That means we have to do parentheses first. And I see parentheses here and parentheses there. But you know what I'm looking? I'm seeing that I need to substitute that 3 in for the n. So let me go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my problem so it's all in there. Now, some of you might say to yourself, you know, Mr. Wara, you're doing a lot of extra steps here. And you know what? You would be correct. But I'm telling you, it's all about caution. It's about safety. And if you put each step down, your chances improve that you'll get the answer correct. I like those odds. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the parentheses. So the first step to me would be 7 minus 4, which is so easy. That's right. It's just 3. And we have 3 plus 3 multiplied the difference of 5 and 3. And if I look at Sammy's first step, he has 7 minus 4 equals 3. So you know what? I say yes, that that is a correct answer. Way to go, Sammy. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell I got a new bell? Yes. Okay. So now I come down and I'm like, okay, well, what's my next step? I would think my next step here would be to handle that parentheses here. I have 3 multiplied by the difference of 5 and 3. So I put 3 plus, and then I put 3 times 5 minus 3, which is 2. Now, uh, did he do 5 minus 3 equals 2? He did. He did do that anyway. Cool. So, so far, we're good. That's like step one. So I'm going to put a little star. You get a star, and so do you. Yay. Okay, but we come down to step three. Uh-oh, I'm already just glancing. I peeked, that is. This is 3 plus 3 equals 6. Hmm, I think I have a problem with that there. Yes, because I have 3 multiplied by 2. I also have 3 plus 3, depending on how you look at that problem. But that refers me back to PEMDAS. So let's take a look. It says here that we multiply and divide before we add and subtract. That must come first. And when we say the order of operations, this is what we call this, well... That means that in the order that it comes as well. So even if, you know, division comes before multiplying, you would divide before multiplying as long as it comes in the order that you get the problem. Okay? There's my little line. Okay, so, you know, this is what I'm going to circle this and say, you know what, this is where he made his mistake. Right there. Rather going, because that's going to change the answer. Look, he would have done this, I'm guessing, and then maybe multiplied by 2, I guess, and then you get 12. See, and I'm going to say that's not correct. You should have actually taken 3 plus 3 times 2. We leave our 3 here. We add the product of 3 and 2, which is 6. And now 3 plus 6 equals 9. A completely different answer. 
Okay, so let me go back up to the top, make sure we're doing everything okay. Explain his mistake and the correct method to evaluate the expression. Okay, so I probably need to write some notes here. Let's put Sammy's first mistake was that he added the, I almost want to say the threes together, rather than adding the three to the product. He should have multiplied the three and the two first, then added. Okay, there you go. Woo, what a long explanation, eh? I would say so. Gee, Mr. Warren, you wrote like a paragraph. I know, what can I say? I just got busy. All right, let's go to the next problem. Boom, oh, yay. Next problem, number six. It says the diagram on the left represents the expression four plus six y. Okay, using the diagram on the right, regroup by drawing around the group in order to write an expression equivalent, ooh, keywords there, an equivalent expression to four plus six y, which you can see these two are like the same right there. And actually the diagrams look exactly the same. So what we're basically needing to do here is show through drawing each expression and how they're equivalent to each other. Well, they look exactly the same, don't they? If I'm saying four plus six y, and one way I could show the very first expression four plus six y is you say, well, it's just four, so we'll circle the four, okay? Kind of think of it like that. Plus, and then here I have, look at six y's. Okay, that would probably be the first one I would do. But now since I have to write an equivalent expression here. Okay, well, first we need to kind of find out what is an expression that's equivalent to four plus six y. Hmm, okay, well, when I look at four plus six y, I can't help but see almost immediately that the four here, see, and the six, they both, have a common factor. They do. When I think of the factors of four, I think of one, two, and four. And when I think of the factors of six, I think of one, two, three, six. And as you can see, I see a common factor of two. I know, I'm quite the investigator, eh? So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out a two from that expression so I can make an equivalent expression, which is similar to the property that we've been studying, which is the distributive property. So if I were to take a two out, I would have a two multiplied, because I have to multiply two to get to my four. And that would be another two, because two times two is four. So that matches up. Now I have my addition sign. And now I'm just gonna say, what do I have to multiply two to get six? That would be three, my friends. Yeah, I know. This is pretty basic times table stuff, eh? And, but I also have a Y. So I have to add on that Y. And there you go. Now I've just written an equivalent expression. Because if I go ahead and multiply using the distributive property, I end up with four plus six y. Okay, I'm double checking my work. I'm not gonna circle the four here because that's not what this is saying. This is actually saying two groups of two plus three y's. You can see this like, aha, here's two. And then here I have three y. Okay, so there's my little circle. Yeah, wee, oh, this is so much fun. Okay. And now I'm gonna do the other one because I have another group, yes, and okay. Okay, Mr. War, you can stop now. You can stop, okay, we see your line, okay. Cool, all right, so you see the difference? It's just like the drawing. The tiles are pretty much exactly the same. All right, what does it say down here? Write the expression that your grouping represents. Oh, I think we already did that. Our grouping represents two times two plus three y. Um, or, or, you know what, or, that could also mean that's the same thing as if you were to have two times three y plus plus two. Boy, these numbers are looking really, come on. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, two. Now, this is typically, you know, when you get up into algebra, that's how you would typically write this. This looks weird. Usually, I think, put the variable and the coefficient here first, and then you put the constant, which follows. It still works out the same thing. You're still going to end up with six y plus four. But that's how we would typically write it the other way around. Okay, I think that's all we have. Next problemo. Dung. Oh, cool, yay. Boy, that Lonnie guy, he's like on every single page. Okay, number seven says, a field is shown below. Okay, it says, Ricardo writes the expression six times the sum of three and eight to express the area of the field. Now it says, write a different but equivalent expression to represent the area of the field. Okay, uh, well, we just did the distributive property, didn't we? Yeah, so if he's, he wrote the expression three times the sum of three and eight, 
Well, yeah, with a distributive property, we can just go ahead and multiply the first term by 6. That's what that's called. We get 18. Then we're going to add, and then we're just going to take the 6 times the 8, which is 48. There you go. Now we've got an equivalent expression. It's expressing the exact same value, okay? Which we don't know what that is yet because we didn't add them. Now it does say which mathematical property could be used to justify both expressions are equivalent. Well, you know what? Yeah, we just talked about that. That's a good old distributive property. Yay. What is the area of the field? Oh, okay. So now we're figuring out the area. Now remember, the area is always length times width equals A, if you will. Okay, now our length there, in this particular problem we had two, right? We had the three and the eight. So that's really what the area in this case, what we were saying was, is we could take the six, which is the width, and just multiply it by that very first section of three and then eight. But we could also, I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can solve this, but since we already have 18 plus 48, we can just add those two together. We have 16, carry the one, that's five, so we end up with 66. Now, which is the same as if we had this problem, I just want you guys to be aware, this is just an equivalent expression that we that we showed here, okay? But that doesn't mean that you couldn't have solved what was in the parentheses first, getting 11. Now you have 6 times 11, which is 66. Now, remember, though, 66 is square, and, and I believe it was miles. You could write it this way, or you could write 66 miles squared. Sometimes they just put M-I. Same thing. Okay. Cool. Let's move on to the next page. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, Lonnie, here you are again. Oh, my goodness. Look at you just swimming to every page here. Uh, where's our problem here? Really? You cut out our problem? <laughs> what? You're going to keep my problem unless I give you a YouTube channel? All right. This is too much. Your own YouTube channel? What are you gonna what are you gonna do with your own YouTube channel? <laughs> You're gonna show kids how to cut up snowflakes with your pincers? Okay. Listen, Lonnie, um, it takes a lot and I, I don't I don't think you're ready for something as big as your YouTube channel. Hey, can we just work this out later? Right now, let's just get this math problem done. All right, just give me the problem. You have it? Yay, okay, can you give it to me? All right, so I can finish this video. Oh my goodness, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna draw algebra tile models, like in question six. Okay, we did that before. To prove that two plus four X and two times the sum of two X plus one are equivalent. All right, can you, yeah, thank you for doing that. Oh my goodness. Now we have the two plus four X. So I'm gonna do models for this problem. So like the last one, what we kind of did here is we drew, so I'm gonna just show that as my one. Here's another one. Here's my X's. So, you know, if we were to think about drawing around those, you see that two would be like saying, here's the two, right? Plus, and then over here we have the four X. It's just like the, the problem that we did, okay? Two plus four X. So just putting them in the same location because what we're going to show here is we're just going to show how drawing around them makes an equivalent expression. See here we did the 2 plus 4x. Now we're doing actually two groups of 2x plus 1. And you can see in this very first row here we have 2x and then we have our 1. And then the next row we have 2x plus 1. We have two groups of 2x plus 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and circle this one group. Let's circle the other group. And just like that, Look at, we have two groups of 2x plus 1. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! Now, it does say explain how your picture proves the two expressions are equivalent. Well, I think I would have to say, how does it prove it? Well, the first drawing showed 2 plus 4x because I circled two tiles of 1 first, then four tiles of, I guess I could just put one X, okay? So the other one was two groups of two X plus one, okay? And I circled them accordingly. So that kind of shows you how I did this and it was through the drawings. So this proves it. Plus we do know that if you have two plus four X, that's going to equal two groups of two X plus one, four X plus two. And that means the same thing, or two, one plus two X, of course. 
Yay. Okay, cool. Now, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm still thinking Lonnie, YouTube channel. All right, come on. Now, let's see. What do we have left? Oh, that's it. There's no more work. Woohoo. Yay. We're getting close to the end. But what do you got your own page again? Oh, yeah. I said we'd talk later. Oh, my goodness. This guy is very persistent. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. First of all, YouTube channel, you. Okay. Well, you need a, you need a Gmail. There's a lot of stuff you need, buddy. I don't think you're ready for that. Okay. Oh, well. You know, I get that question a lot from you feature animals. Please, can I show up in another video? Um, I know. You're afraid this is the end of your acting career? Um, yeah, it's just going to come to an end here, probably. No, the only... Look, hey, if a bunch of subs want you to return, maybe you'll return. You know, that's all I can say. It's popularity. If they like you, you know, so... <laughs> Could you tell that, as a child, I liked being a puppeteer? Yes! Okay, Mr. Wara. <laughs> I know. I'm talking to myself again. It's time to go! It is, because you know what? I'm hearing that heavy metal. <laughs> heavy metal music in the background. It is time to go. My friends, thank you so much for joining me in the second video. It was very short, to the point. Now, live long and prosper.